What's up guys? Welcome back to Disc Golf Weekly and this week I've got a really different video for you guys. Uh, I've never really done anything like this before. I don't know if I'll ever do it again. Um, it's just something that I felt like uh, I should make. Um, I just wanted to address a couple things really quick. Um, so if you're looking for like a review, like a disc review or something like that, that's not what this video is going to be. Um, if you want to stay tuned, keep watching. If not, you can just close out of it now because that's not what this video is about. I just want to apologize up ahead really quick. Uh, if uh, it seems like I'm reading off of a script or something like that, that's because I do have some paper printed out um, for what I want to cover. Basically just because I've never done anything like this before, um, I just wanted to print this off and make sure I cover everything that I wanted to. Um, just so I don't skip over anything or something doesn't slip my mind. Um, so hopefully you guys understand. Uh, I do apologize for that. If I ever do any videos like this in the future, hopefully I won't need to have this with me. Enough of me rambling before the video. Let's get right into it, guys. Why does it seem that we can't have a serious discussion in this sport? It seems every time someone tries to start a discussion related to disc golf and trying to further grow the sport, the majority of the responses they get are not people presenting their viewpoint and a response as to why they feel that way, which would generate a debate. There's just a lot of disrespect and people ridiculing the person asking the question. Why is that? If anything, that mindset is holding the sport back more than the people who are asking the questions or the topics to be discussed. To better demonstrate this, let's look at some recent examples. Probably the most well-known recent controversy is Vibram's high-speed driver initially named the 420. Vibram claimed many reasons for giving it this name. The scheduled release date was April 20th, which on a calendar is 420. Uh, it was the 420th design to come from Vibram. And most obvious to us disc golfers, the reference to the public image that we get as all disc golfers are stoners. Steve Dodge, the head of Vibram Disc Golf and the man responsible for naming the disc, wanted to promote discussion about the image that we are given and hopefully help us move past that unfortunate stereotype which we all know is not true. Unfortunately, Steve got ridiculed to the point that he had to stop doing his vlog series where he gave updates on Vibram Disc Golf, discussions on current events, and even some tips and tricks. People were saying things like, I'll never throw Vibram again, and friends don't let friends throw Vibram discs. It more than likely was going to have a negative impact on his business, so he had no choice to, but to rename the disc and wait months to give it a proper release. The most recent event where this has taken place is the post Dave Felberg made just a matter of days ago regarding McFly So High video and the lack of censorship in his videos. I won't read Dave's full message, but the gist of it is that he didn't agree that after editing his videos, McFly still left curse words in that were clearly audible. He approached McFly multiple times and still the curse words were in his videos. Feldberg tried to spark a discussion about curse words and how they should be censored out of his videos because he is one of the most prominent sources for disc golf coverage there is. The backlash against Dave was quite plentiful. I personally don't agree with Dave that it should be McFly or anyone else who creates disc golf videos responsibility, but I do think it's an interesting topic that could be discussed. I think if the players are to be censored, that it's the responsibility of the PDGA, the TD for that tournament, and the other players on that card. However, the response against Dave was overwhelmingly negative. It wasn't people responding with their opposing or supporting viewpoints, it was much more people mocking him and putting down and hating on Dave. McFly has since censored the F word out of his videos, but all other curse words remain. The original comments from Dave and McFly have since been deleted due to the negative responses. This last example I'll bring up is one that not many people may have seen or heard about. Because this situation never quite made it to the levels of the McFly So High and Felberg situation or the Vibram 420, I'm going to leave everyone involved's name out of it. One of the more well-known disc golf YouTube channels made a post on Facebook saying that if the opportunity presented itself, mind you this whole situation they talked about was merely a hypothetical, they would not be willing to film a certain touring pro because of the legal situation they found themselves in. The post was ended with the words, and I quote, do you agree or disagree with me, and why? Clearly they were just trying to drum up some conversation and get people talking. But, you guessed it, people almost immediately filled the comments with negative feedback and delete this post type responses. Some people actually responded to the presented question, but they were unfortunately in the minority. Yet again, the post was deleted because of the negative responses immediately ending the chance of any discussion on the topic. 
Now of course I see the irony in me making this, but I feel that it's something that should have been brought up and I don't know if anyone else was going to, so I took it upon myself. My question is simply this, why can't we have a proper discussion about these possibly serious and sometimes controversial topics? And why is it that whenever someone tries, they're stonewalled with so much negativity and criticism, they're forced to delete the post and pretend it never happened?